what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the knights of horror today we have a very very special video that uh we were fortunate enough to get the opportunity to film um we recently took a trip out to the queen mary in long beach my girlfriend and i for our year and a half anniversary and we decided that we wanted to try out the gray ghost experience now for those who are not familiar with the name the gray ghost back in world war ii they repainted the ship they gutted it and they turned it in basically a, into a world war ii ship uh and they called it the gray ghost um now what this group of people are doing is they are coming together and it's one person that's there and i know it's it's like a um i think like a a couple that is doing uh a few things around the world uh one in colorado and one here in long beach california so they're doing this project and they are doing paranormal investigation. What's really cool about this is you get to get there, you get like a credential and you get a blindfold. Now the blindfold kind of tripped me out at first because I was like, I wonder what we're going to use this for. But we went further on and I have to tell you, this was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had dealing with the paranormal being that I don't have very many experiences dealing with the paranormal. Our tour guide name was Becca. She was um, a professional all around. She was, really informative about stuff she really um has a nice detailed log about the spirits she's interacted with on the ship uh it, it's really cool to see that um she's kind of built this relationship with them and we were seeing that as we were going through our investigation we went through i think four different places uh obviously we went down to the first place we went to was the uh the pool the infamous haunted pool that we went down there and then right after that we went to of course the um the room where the captain was obviously where he was like uh, controlling the ship and everything um and then we went to room b340 and then we went to a bottom portion of the ship that was pretty creepy it kind of looked like the front of the ship but like at the very kind of bottom portion but it, it was really cool um I, I really enjoyed the time we had there but we have a lot of footage that we we, we filmed but i'm only going to show you guys parts of it because i only want you guys to get a feel of what this is and kind of get a, a sense of what this is, uh, starting with, of course, uh, our first destination we're going to take a look at right here is the abandoned pool. Now, the rumor is, and the, and the, and the legend goes, that there is a little girl who haunts the, the pool area. Um, obviously, with haunts like Dark Harbor and, and all these other haunts over the years, it has um, turned into something more than it actually is. Uh, a lot of people actually believe now that it has manifested a ghost because of all these urban legends that kind of disguise itself as, as this as this child. Um, from what we were getting as far as evidence went and everything, um, we we made some contact with it, but nothing too major. Uh, but I I feel like that I don't know maybe our our tour guide was telling us that it, after COVID things got a little silent at Queen Mary, uh, so I don't know if spirits just kind of felt like alone after being away for so long from society but it was interesting when she said that because when she said that then i kind of started paying attention to more of, of activity that we were trying to catch um so here's a little bit of the footage of the pool room and then afterwards we'll talk about it. i'm becca i'll be your investigator for the evening i have been investigating the queen mary since 2018 i was also one of the few that was very lucky very grateful to be able to continue coming aboard during the COVID closure. So I was able to continue investigating during that time as well. It's very special. Um, what we do tonight is not what you see on paranormal TV. We're not tight t-shirts, sunglasses indoors screaming, come at me demon. Uh, we try to take a kinder, more respectful approach to what it is that we do. And being that her glory days were 1936 to 1967, we generally find ourselves interacting with a person from a certain generation. And when you treat that person with kindness and respect, you tend to get the same in return. You catch more flies with honey. Um, being what we all see on paranormal TV, you're gonna to wanna to think of tonight as going fishing. We hope to catch a fish when we go out in the middle of the lake and send our rod out, but you never know if you're actually going to catch that fish. I always say the ghosts aren't on the payroll. We can't make anybody do what they're not willing to do. Um, when you watch paranormal TV, you're watching anywhere from eight hours to three days of work, sitting in the dark, filming that entire time, hoping something lights up and happens. And when it does or doesn't, whatever it does, that gets edited down into a highly energized episode with music to make you feel thrilled and excited and entertained. Um, 
So we're going to do our best from our experiences on the ship to help facilitate some conversations this evening. Um, and I'm just, in, it sounded like nobody here has done an investigation before, so we're all gonna be on equal footing. I do apologize, it is a lot of talking to get our evening started, but once we get through that, we get through our active investigation time as much as we can. We wanna make sure you know all the equipment that we're going to be using, how it works, so that way we're all on a level playing field. So in this next part, before we got into said pool, um, we actually got to break down all the pieces of equipment we were going to be using that night. That way we kind of had an idea of what everything did and what to look out for. She was very informative about each piece of equipment and uh, one by one she started passing everything out. Um, so here's a little look of what equipment we were working with that night and, and how pretty much it worked. So we try to lead a skeptical and as scientific as you can investigation when it comes to something that you can't see and when i say scientific and pull these guys out people scoff and it's really understandable these guys are k2 meters um, they detect emf electromagnetic frequencies um, there's a whole bunch of different things in our world that emit emf which is why these guys were designed and created and then they have been um, used in paranormal investigations with the thought that we as people contain energy and even science supports that energy does not just go away. Um, so when we pass on, there is still the question, where does that energy go? So if we still exist in some capacity and we contain that energy, that might be what it is that allows us to light these devices up to be able to communicate with a ghost. Um, so these guys, the false positives they're prone to is um, our security guard has a radio on them. Any crew person on the ship has a radio on them. If it gets keyed, that sends a signal through the space that lights these guys up. Um, there's a helicopter pad right outside in the, on the parking lot. The police fly over the ship and key their radio. That also emits a signal through the space. Um, we have six of these. They're also numbered and labeled. So then that way, if we see two or more going off, we know that it's going to be that outside influence as opposed to a ghost. We don't pass on and suddenly have carry powers and light up all the things in the room. Um, so what we're hoping for this evening with every interaction, we're hoping to have a direct conversation and ask and receive. What we do when we meet and greet and talk to each other as we go through life, we're talking to people and we're hoping to have the same experience. Um, so by having multiples of these, we can also direct um, where we're going to get our interactions to make some of that evidence more compelling. Then. Perhaps we were having a conversation with somebody. If we ask them to light up the green light that's label number two, and then this is the thing that lights up after we ask for that, that becomes interesting because it was directly responding to the thing that we asked for. Um, the other false positive that these guys are prone to is something all of us have on us tonight, cell phones. Um, so with that, does anybody need to remain in contact with the outside world for the next three hours? Awesome. If you don't, I would recommend putting your phones into airplane mode as well as turning the Wi-Fi off. That way you're... So during the first uh, introduction of things, she started on us to put our phones on airplane mode. That way it didn't detect during the EMF uh, or any of the other equipment. Uh, we wanted to make sure that everything that was caught on camera or on the um, investigation was as authentic as possible. So limiting distractions and devices like this helps a lot. That way she knows what is uh, more likely to get sensed off as far as uh, contacting spirits. So this next portion, uh, she's going to go through the rest of the equipment. Uh, a lot of great stuff that comes up here. A lot of stuff that actually comes in handy in uh, the investigation. And you'll see more of that right now. Even though he's got his phone in airplane mode, just the fact that his phone is got a function going, the video recording, that also will kind of do that little glitchy seizure flash thing going on. Usually it does. It's being good. Okay. Nice. <laughs> hey, Android, I see you. There we go. <laughs> um, to help us get from space to space as quickly as possible, I will ask you guys to help me move our equipment from room to room. That way we'll have to pack and unpack every space we go to to get you guys that active investigation time as much as possible. So my first request is, would somebody be my K2 Wrangler tonight? It's just simply getting three of these guys from room to room. Awesome. What I thought was really cool about it too is she really like involved you more than obviously the investigation you were helping you know use the equipment you were helping kind of get place to place with the equipment and you really felt involved in, in the investigation so she was really good at making sure that everyone was involved in this investigation just as much as she was um and, and to, to really get to uh 
to get to, to kind of experience all this, you know, it was, it was really fun. Next up, gaining in popularity in the paranormal world, we have the motion activated cat toys. Um, simple, they have a motion sensor in them, so then that way if they're tapped, touched, kicked, played with in any sort of way, that motion sensor is triggered, lights up the ball and lets us know that somebody is interacting with us. Another way to tap and interact and get our attention tonight. False positives these guys are going to be prone to is their balls, they roll, we're on uneven flooring, we're on a ship, there's tilty spaces, it is what it is. The way we've tried to limit that as much as possible outside of ship ground vibrations is there is um, a baseball stand that the balls are taped to, that way hopefully we can limit that rolling away for that false positive. We'll set them down in the spaces that we go into, that way when we ask somebody to tap it to interact with us, to answer our questions and talk to us, that tapping would allow it to light up and let us know that somebody's talking to us. Would somebody be my cat ball wrangler tonight? Another form of a K2 meter we have in the room tonight is this guy. This is a data logger. It is measuring different things in our atmosphere that people believe are interacted with or changed when you have a ghost present or a ghost that you are interacting with. Um, the things that it measures is temperature, humidity, and pressure. Um, there is a K2 meter built into it as well. And you will probably never see it go off again tonight. Um, when I turn it on will be the time you see it. I've been told that the K2 meter on this is the hardest of my equipment to set off, so I've never seen it go off in a conversation with somebody um, outside of direct inter or in outside interference. Um, so when I turn it on, my finger is pointed to where you're going to see a bar of blue lights. And that's the only time you'll see it. That's the K2 meter on there. On the bottom, you see orange lights. That's a vibration sensor, another way to tap to interact with us this evening. Numbers displayed is the temperature in Fahrenheit. You can mostly ignore those numbers tonight. It's not an instant read thermometer. It doesn't turn on or enter a space and just know what the temperature is. You will see it tick and adjust the whole time that we are in a space, just kind of moving around, trying to find what the temperature of the room is. And up top, is where it's letting you know if there's any significant changes in those environmental factors, be it temperature by a red or a blue light, there's a green light for a significant change in humidity, and then there's a yellow light for a significant change in pressure. I used to call that my sassy yellow light because for whatever reason, in a post-COVID world, this is the only thing of my equipment that's going off with any sort of regularity. Pre-COVID and during COVID, if I was having a conversation with somebody, I could ask for interactions on a K2 meter and receive it. I could ask for interactions on a cat ball and receive it. I could ask for interactions on this and receive it, all in that ask and receive conversational way. For whatever reason, post-COVID world, this yellow light is the only thing that's going off. I don't know why that is. And science brain was like, well, if only one thing's going off, clearly I'm talking to nobody. There's just something wrong with this box, so I'm going to ignore it. Until one night, Every single time we were in a space and I was like, hey, well, if we were talking to somebody, if you want to try to talk to us or continue, we're leaving, but you can come to the next spot with us. You can follow us. Every time I said follow, the yellow light lit up. So that thing created a pattern, which made me start paying attention to this and going, okay, maybe you are interacting with this and this is just the only thing. So I started engaging with it and how I use the K2 meters and cat balls for answering questions. I started focusing it on just the yellow light and I started receiving responses by the yellow light, getting the same answer twice to the same question, getting a positive response to something that I expect to get a positive response to. Um, so keep your eye on the yellow light. That's where we're more likely to have those interactions this evening. I do keep a log of everything interesting that seems to happen in our evening. So my head may be down writing something down. So if you see that yellow light go off, feel free to shout it out and let the group know that you saw the yellow light. That way we know that somebody is potentially talking to us and we can all make sure we're not missing that activity together. Um, if you see this guy set down in a room anywhere, just pick it up, grab it, move it to the next spot for us. That way we don't leave him behind. There will be one more piece of equipment that we will introduce in the next space that we go into. Um, it won't work for us down here. The last thing that will work for us down here is this guy. This is a boo buddy. I call him Mr. Bear. Um, because the space that we are about to go into, many like to come and investigate because they believe there to be a little girl between the ages of five to 10 in the space. We have been told that we as people, when we are having a conversation potentially with a ghost, that we can look like big scary shadows. And if you've ever seen a shadow humanoid kind of figure out of the corner of your eye, you were probably scared or thought it was a demon or something scary, when that could have just truly 
been a person and that's how they were presented. So if we look that way and we're trying to talk to a five to 10 year old little girl and we're saying, do you want some candy? That's pretty freaking scary. Um, so hopefully he is a little bit disarming and is a bit more cute and cuddly to potentially want to come and have a conversation with us. He is built for EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon, um, which is when you set out something to record to see if that's the ship, she's a squeaky girl. Um, you set out a recorder, you ask questions, and you see if you get a response to any of those questions that gets recorded on the device that you didn't hear with your ears in the space. Um, personally, because of the other method of investigating I'm going to introduce for us later tonight, um, is a bit more conversational and direct and quick. EVPs is just personally not my favorite form of investigating. I prefer to not do it because of the time it takes and with you guys only having three hours, it's not worth your time tonight to try to sit down and do an EVP session. Um, you'll see how he cycles through questions because he's built with those stock questions to cycle through and he leaves 30 seconds of space between every question because you've got to leave the 30 seconds of complete silence, which we also don't get on a ship that's open to the public, um, to see if a response comes through. And then you go back and you listen to that recording and you may or may not have a response. And if you do, now you're five minutes behind trying to continue that conversation with somebody. Um, and if you don't, you spent all that time and you're gonna do a next cycle of questions. So even though he's built for EVPs, we're going to ignore his primary function because he's still gonna work for us passively in the space being that he's cute and cuddly and he has lights built into his arms to let us know if he's sensing any significant changes in temperature, which will alert us if somebody is playing with him or interacting, as well as verbal cues saying that he's ticklish or he likes warm hugs or um, things I like holding hands. So there are still ways passively using in the space that he can alert us if somebody is interacting with us outside of that primary EVP function. So for the most part, ignore the questions that he says, he will just keep talking, but I'll turn him on his lowest setting so that he doesn't distract us as much as possible. So, our first location has been off of any public paranormal investigation route as a hard closure since at least 2018, but we're getting to go back in and reestablish the space for communication, and we get to go in and investigate. So welcome back, everybody, to the first class swimming pool. Come on in. So as you can see, we had just entered the first class swimming pool here on the Queen Mary. And fun fact about this that I learned about the last ghost tour that we took, that uh, they allowed second class to swim on here back in its heyday. But after time was up, they had like a few hours to, to enjoy the pool. After their time was up, they actually drained the pool, scrubbed the pool really good and filled it with brand new water for the first class guest. Um, and yeah, that was a, an interesting fact to hear about this pool. But this is the infamous pool everyone talks about. Uh, you've probably seen it if you've been to Queen Mary's Dark Harbor in the past. You probably know the lore of Queen Mary's Dark Harbor story. Uh, but this is the actual, this is the actual thing. And, and another fun fact is below the pool was actually a boiler. And for some reason, Long Beach decided to take out that boiler, which was kind of the only support for that pool. So you can't really step in that pool. You got to be like super, th this pool is like fragile as hell. So uh, yeah, this pool, you can't really go into it other than the blocked off area they have set up for you. Um, I'm pretty sure you can probably go around it, but I, I, I don't know too much about the surrounding surrounding space. I just know what's inside the pool, but this is where our investigation begins. So let's take a look and see how it went for this first room. Again, I'm only going to play little bits and pieces of, of the, uh, the, the rooms because I want you guys to really go and experience the Grey Ghost Project yourself. So uh, go check that out. Uh, link is in the bio for tickets. Uh, and yeah, let's go check out what we saw in the pool. Because of the legend of Jackie, the little girl um, who they've been saying since the 70s drowned in a swimming pool. Um, unfortunately, her origin story is not correct. Being a ship, they keep impeccable records and logs. They know every single recorded death that happened during her sailing days. Um, 
and records of any injuries. The only thing that was ever reported in this space um, was a woman who bumped her nose and her lip on the bottom of the pool. She probably got a margarita and was fine. Um, no little girl or passenger or person ever drowned in the swimming pool. Um, but even though the origin of Jackie is incorrect, we still believe that she is here. So many people have had interactions with her over the years. Um, we don't believe death is what makes a ghost. It doesn't have to be a tragedy, an awful, horrible thing that leaves a person to stay at haunt a place. This could have just simply been the space that she had some of the happiest days of her life. And that sounds more pleasing for why you would want to return to a place and hang out there. Um, there are other reports of other entities in this space as well, so I always throw out into the room um, that Jackie or anybody who's sick of hearing about this Jackie girl, we're here to talk to them. Because um, I can only imagine that so many people come in here with the direct objective of only Jackie, that you're closing yourself off to anybody who may be willing to come and talk to us. Um, we like to consider that every space we go into is somebody's home. Um, if you walked into somebody's house and started demanding to speak to them, they would probably call the cops on you. Um, so it will get a little repetitive, but as the evening goes on, every space we walk into, I will ask that you guys introduce yourselves. Um, it's just as simple as putting your name out into the room. We'll go around and everybody one at a time will state their name. You in order to play hide and seek. So here's the rules. You've got to hide near one of my friends, one of the people in my group here. Let me, my security guard is off limits, not out there with one of us in here inside the pool. You have to hide by one of us and we're gonna pass that box around. And since you've been setting off that yellow light, when we find you, whoever you are next to, you will tap the yellow light to let us know that we found you. Are you ready? More than welcome to hide behind me too. I'm a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go hide. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here we come. Um, whatever you guys feel like doing, let's give everybody the chance to tell you potentially find them. I'm just going to pass it around. Just kind of hold it low-ish so then that way it's reachable um, and out towards the group. And holding it for long enough to give a chance for that, you're good, for that yellow light to be tapped. Remember, if we find who you're standing by, who you're hiding near, you have to tap the yellow light to say that's where we, you are. Don't cheat, friend. So as far as the first class swimming pool goes, we did get a few moments with the uh, the orange light, the yellow light that came uh, flickering on. We had some contact with that. Uh, we didn't pick up any uh, EMF or the, uh, the sensor uh, balls did not go off, um, but we were getting a lot of light action from there. Uh, if you guys are watching the video and you guys are hearing audio or you guys saw something that I didn't, yeah, you know, the camera picks up a lot of different things as far as this footage goes. But if you guys see or hear anything or you might you might think you hear something, I mean, you guys can just leave it down in the comments. I'm not really focusing on if we found anything in our recording. I'm focusing more on uh, what was presented to us with this investigation. And uh, I really enjoyed having that moment inside of the pool and to try to uh, contact a, a spirit of some sort in there. Um, it seemed to be uh, a little child uh, and we were trying to play hide and seek with it, trying to play games with it, trying to come very friendly with it so it would communicate with us. Um, hide and seek did not go so well at the end. Uh, no one uh, flickered when they were holding the device. Um, and we were kind of just hoping or maybe thinking that the spirit was on the other side probably, and we couldn't go over there, but yeah, hide and seek champion goes to that spirit for sure. Um, 
Anyway, uh, after that, we went to our next location, was which was the captain's quarters, where he can pretty much man the boat and and all that stuff, and that was a lot of fun. We did that last time on our paranormal ghost hunt, but this time we actually got to do something quite interesting, and this is why the blindfold came in handy. So, the rest of the evening, our primary method of investigating is going to be the reason that you all received blindfolds this evening. Um, and why I dislike EVPs and where we can have a bit more of a direct conversation. Um, what we will be doing tonight is using a spirit box in a way that utilizes what's called the Estes method. Um, the way a spirit box is usually used is it's played out in the middle of the room. It's a radio scanner scanning through radio stations at whatever rate of speed you've set it to. Skipping through that white noise really quickly, like when you hit scan in your car. Except your car will pause on a station that has a signal and will play that station for you. This guy just powers through at whatever rate you've set it to. Um, the thought with it is um, that's potentially a way that a ghost can speak to us. Um, there's a few different theories with it, be it that there's something already out there on the radio sound waves that when they probably control panels. Um, there is a um, uh, something already out there on the sound waves that they can just kind of like pick that word and answer the conversation appropriately um, or is it that they're able to use the sound waves, the sound waves to speak to us directly um, you're listening to the radio if you participate in this um, the way the spirit box is generally used being played out in the middle of the room there's a lot of confirmation bias at play so when you go at it from a scientific standpoint it's really hard to feel like you're getting any sort of conclusive data or evidence because with it playing in the middle of the room, you're hoping to hear specific answers and words to questions that you're asking. If you set it out in the middle of the room, inevitably somebody's going to ask, hey, if someone's here with us, tell us your name. And as it's skipping through, you hear it's And eventually somebody goes, oh, that change in the sound, that was Dave. They said their name is Dave. And then the group is all in agreement. Oh yeah, I heard Dave, I heard Dave. Whether it was Dave or not, we'll never know because that was interpreted into what we were hoping to hear, a name. So. The reason you all receive blindfolds is because the Estes method will have one, maybe two persons listening to the spirit box, as opposed to it being played out into the middle of the room. Only one or two persons are able to hear it, but they're listening to it through noise isolating headphones and they're blindfolded. So now they are deaf and blind to the room. They have no idea what questions are being asked or what is happening in the space. So say I ask the question, if somebody's here, how many fingers am I holding up? and the next thing the person in the headphone says is the number three, that becomes a compelling answer because they had no idea that we were looking for a number nor that three was the correct number we were looking for. If you participate in this, um, I always say think of yourself like a five-year-old child or a parrot. Anything you hear, repeat. Anything you hear, you say it. Um, you are the only interpreter for the box. We have no idea what your experience is. You have no idea what our experience is. Um, anything you hear, repeat. Don't judge it. Don't be like, oh, that's not a ghost. Oh, that's probably not pertaining to the conversation. Oh, that's just a radio DJ. Repeat it. Anything you can make out, repeat it. If it's another language, maybe somebody in the group can translate. Even if it's a language you don't speak, but you feel you can replicate the sound of that word, give it a go. Even if you butcher it, it's okay. Um, Especially being in SoCal, we get a lot of Spanish radio. But even if it is a Spanish word, sometimes that is a correct response to the questions that we are asking in the space. So anything you hear, repeat. If it's a curse word or something that you feel is inappropriate or makes you uncomfortable, repeat it. There are, <laughs> death does not make a saint. There are assholes in life, there are assholes in death. And if we're talking to an asshole, I need to know if there's somebody that I need to shut down. So if you leave me deaf and blind to what is happening on your experience, um, I can't know to shut that down. Nobody gets to fuck with my friends. Um, because it's the radio, um, those of us on the other side are gonna have to swim through what I call the radio gibberish. You're listening to the radio, so you're hearing radio DJs, snippets of songs, commercials. It's what you're hearing. It's what you're repeating. Um, so some of those words are not going to be a ghost. It's just the nature of the experiment. There is no perfect way, there's no magical formula to be able to talk to a ghost. So it's going to be our job to swim through that gibberish and stay on track with the questions and the conversation that we're trying to have. Um, if we start asking questions, say I walk up to you, just on the street, you wouldn't just start blurting out with me, blue formage into tacos. 
I would probably want to seek medical attention for you. <laughs> but if I walked up to you and you gave me a chance to say, hello, how are you? You probably respond appropriately with like, I'm good, I'm tired, how are you? Whatever it may be. So we're looking for a normal conversation tonight as best as we can get. We don't have to thread the needle when this works to try and put together the data of what is happening. We should just be able to have answers to the questions that we're asking. Um, so not everything will be um, interacted with when it's repeated from this experiment. Um, it's called the Estes Method because it was developed in Estes Park, Colorado at the Stanley Hotel by the former resident paranormal team there. Um, Carl Pfeiffer, Connor Randall, and Michelle Tate came up with the way of using the spirit box with the noise isolating headphones and the uh, blindfold um, at the Stanley Hotel, which is most famous for being the space where Stephen King stayed overnight when he had the nightmare that inspired The Shining. Um, so anytime I say if you want to try Estes tonight, this is what I'm referring to, the headphones and the blindfold. Um, to start with, do I have two that would like to give it a go before uh, when we, two over there, great. Stay right there for just a moment. I'm gonna find the radio signal and see what's talking. Um, I have a copper wire attached to it. We're basically in a giant Faraday cage. We're in a big steel box of the ship. So it can be a little difficult to get that radio signal into us sometimes. So I have the copper wire wrapped around the end of the antenna. And then I like wrapping it to some steel of the ship just to help the ship help us conduct that signal a little bit further. And then trying to use portholes and windows where we've got access to them. Boom, wardrobe change. I didn't think you were expecting that. How were you? Anyway, so we got on to our next location of the ship right here. And this is the experiment that I had a lot of fun doing. The investigation portion of, of this experiment was really, really fun. Um, and the cool part was after she explained it all, we got everything set up. We finally sat down and tried to uh, have the spirits basically talk through this radio. And we're, you know, the people who are sitting there with the headphones on, the blindfold on, are the only people that can hear said words come out of that radio. So it was very interesting to see what we got, what was said. Um, now, I'm not going to play the entire portion of, of, you know, the other people doing it, but um, Hayes did film a portion of me doing it. And then later on in this video, I did film a portion of her doing it in room B340, which I believe is our next location right after this one. But here's a portion of me doing it. It was a lot of fun to uh, get to try this experience. I've always seen it. I've never tried it myself. So it was really interesting to see how it worked and uh, to get those little words here and there to, to kind of form a sentence or a saying or a phrase or a name, whatever it may be. Um, it was fun to kind of see all that and, and be a part of that. So here is my experience going through that. And then afterwards, we'll talk about uh, what I felt through that and uh, our next location. Designer. Check. All right, keep trying with your question, guys. It's hot. Was it? What the heck, man? <laughs> Is it hot in this room all the time? Where are they? Is there anyone that isn't with my group here in this space that can hear us? Ready for you. Uno. My friends and I have all said hello and introduced ourselves. Would you tell us your name? So as you can see, they kind of us and they, they sit us down right there. We put on the headphones and then we put on the blindfold. So we have a blind experience. We don't see who's talking. Uh, we can't hear anyone that's talking. That experience alone was pretty interesting. Kind of rewatching this footage for the first time of questions that were being asked and then the answers that were being received. Um, very fascinating to me. Very fascinating indeed. Um, 
Through this, we actually, uh, in the middle of this, before I actually got to do that, we uh, we hit a fire alarm. Um, the fire alarm at the Queen Mary went off. We don't know what it was from um, and whatnot. So we had to stop our experience for a little bit. But uh, because of that, they extended the time that was taken away from us, uh, which brings me to my next location, room B340. Nice day. Satisfied customers. Um, unfortunately, when they sold the ship, they didn't tell the next owners that they had put any of those gadgets or gizmos into the wall. And so people would randomly get assigned to this room, have something happen in the middle of the night, and understandably go complain to the front desk and ask for a room change. They had so many complaints that they decided to take this room offline. And that's about the time they noticed the control panel out in the hallway making all the gadgets fire. <laughs> so they cut the power to the gadgets, Gasmos gadgets and um, started putting the room back online, but the complaints didn't stop. They continue to have the complaints about things happening in the middle of the night. Um, so this room, because it has always had that expectation, at least since the 90s, of it being a haunted room, I think there's some of hiding in it. You can come here and hide and revel in it, or the expectation has been set, prankster's paradise. Um, death does not make a saint. Assholes in life, assholes in death. If you like spooking people or pulling pranks on someone, this is the spot to be. You're going to be the person ripping the sheets off the bed, giving people a good scare, or rattling the closet door to wake them up in the middle of the night. Um, beyond that, too, every paranormal investigation show comes here and wants to investigate this space. And if you have a message you need to get out to somebody, you can see that. You can watch paranormal TV. You can walk by a TV when it's on and see that people are coming here. And if you have something you want to get out, you're probably going to want to go where your chances are increased to be able to get that message out, where somebody is always potentially going to be listening. Um, so even though it didn't start genuinely, I think this room definitely has kind of become a hot spot for paranormal activity. Um, we're going to get our devices set up here, turn off the majority of the lights. Do I have two that would like to give us this a try in here? One for sure, two. All right, we'll do the two to start there. Wherever you'd like on the bed, I'm going to get the spirit box set up over here. So as Miss Becca was uh, setting up the equipment for uh, our next paranormal investigation in room B340, I thought it was kind of cool because over the years I have heard so many stories about B340. Um, a lot of them being lore to haunts and whatnot, but nonetheless, hearing the stories and then being in the room, I will say this, the room does give off a very eerie feeling. And for the most part of that part of the investigation, which you'll see right now with Hayes, uh, we were in the dark. Uh, we had a few lights going, I think like a little, like a little, a couple flickering lights, but for the most part, we were in the dark on that one. And, and that made it even creepier, especially where I was standing. I was up against that, that kind of, um, that support post and right behind me was actually the closet and the restroom and the exit to the room so just that alone was very eerie uh, as it is and to kind of see what Hayes experienced through through her session in, in the spirit box was was really fascinating as well so here's a little bit of her footage um blindfolded with the headphones on trying to communicate um trying to get communication from the spirits through the spirit box is there a marine? Extra. Is there a marine in the room? Sit down. Who do you want to sit down? Or is that sit down, stay a while? Right there. Okay. Do you take a seat on the bed with my friend sometimes when we have these conversations? Hi there. What's your name? How may I address you? Thank you. 
think my friends and I are going to leave you in peace tonight. We're going to go to our last spot. If it's been difficult to talk to us and you want to continue to talk to us, you can come along with us. Who we are. Otherwise, I'll be back next week. Now, I will say this. B340 wasn't as active as the the captain quarters and uh, the pool. Um, however, we still got a little bit of communication. As you guys can tell in the corner next to where Hayes was sitting on the nightstand, they put the device where the yellow light shined. Um, so we were getting a lot of contact through that. A few words here and there. Um, I have a lot more of that footage and it's a lot of just kind of asking questions in silence and then hoping to get some responses. Um, but like Becca said, something energy wise may have happened after COVID because after COVID they haven't been as active or as vocal as they were in the past. Um, I have reason to believe that maybe they were just so used to guests coming in and out of the, uh, the, the ship that, uh, after there was nobody on the ship for at least a year, year and a half, um, almost two years, I think for Queen Mary, uh, it, it, it it, it was a different tone and, and change of, of how the ship was compared to when it has life on it. Um, so maybe they just felt betrayed, abandoned. I don't know. Maybe they took it the wrong way because they didn't physically and really understand what was going on. Um, but with that being said, we kind of packed up here in B340. Uh, it was really cool to be in there and kind of see you know what it's like to do an investigation in that room uh nonetheless so that was really fun uh now we're going to move on to our very last location which was somewhere kind of below the ship um it looked like the kind of front part of the ship uh it was a very eerie room to to say the least but uh we uh we had some fun in that run and that was our our last our last stop of the tour so let's check out what we what we saw in that one what that room was about and uh, a little bit of information on it we are in our fourth and final location, the Ardeck Report. Hello? If anybody's here, expect I'm back. If you're familiar with my devices, you know you can tap them to say hello. Just like this green one, if you tap that, it goes rainbow over to red. That lets us know that you're saying hello. Same with the box with the numbers on it as well as the clear walls, trap kick, step throw, whatever you have to do. Make it do, it lights up all the time. All those things let you interact with us, say hello, or answer our questions as we yes. We also have the radio so my friends here can listen and hear you and hopefully verbalize your responses. <clears throat> My friends here are listening. We've switched out. Paper. Thank you. I'm glad you stayed with us. Is it okay if we talk to you for a few more minutes? Discover. Worried about you? Haunted? Who's here tonight? Ugly. Do you have any boyfriends on the boat? Lasso? Same question, change the gender. Do you have any girlfriends on the boat? No. Do you have a boyfriend on the boat? A ver. Or a girlfriend? Do 
Do you have family on the boat? Siegel? Are you a bird? Do you work or play on the boat? Simone. Can you hear me? I don't know. Can I? Did you say can you hear me? And if you did, however you did that, yes. Is the man in gray here? Someone's here. Can you tell me their favorite color, please? Mine's purple. What's your favorite color? Did you want to play a game with us? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no hide and seek in this place. Uh, no, not with anyone I'm willing to play with. Gotcha. <laughs> Gray man, I consider a friend. The bald man, the bald guy is not a friend. Wait, his name's Bald. No. <laughs> 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 Encouraging. Yeah, we don't want to encourage him. We shut him down. What's the number on the box currently? Uh, let's see. 639. Six, Thank you. Hope that recover. What'd she just say? Something about recover. So again, I didn't want to give away too much in this tour. The reason being is because afterwards we got to talk to our paranormal investigator, Becca. Um, and mind you, we got permission ahead of time to film this experience. Um, we bought tickets and I emailed you know, the, the, the email that was available on the website, uh, asked if I was allowed to film and Becca was very, very generous into letting me film. Um, I do suggest if, if, if you are going to take this tour, 
and you you do want to film it, I'll obviously email to get permission first. Um, but she told me something right before we the start of the tour, and that's why we don't have a, as much footage as we do, but I'm glad we got the footage that we got. Um, to not really record as much, to really uh, soak in the experience and enjoy it for what it is. Um, and, I, and I did that a lot. I, I did record a lot too, but I also, as I was recording, I was really focused in on this experience. Um, so I want to give a big shout out to Becca for, for starters, for our paranormal, for being our paranormal investigator that night. Uh, it was an incredible experience and I will never forget it. I actually want to go back and, and, and do it again. That was a lot of fun. Um, thank you to my girlfriend Hayes. She bought the tickets for us for our, uh, for our year and a half anniversary. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, very, very good time at the great ghost. Um, I want to thank the Queen Mary themselves uh, for not only hosting the event, but for just being an amazing part of history. Um, so thank you, Queen Mary, uh, so much. And uh, yeah, I, I think that if you guys are still questionable about the paranormal, then maybe take this tour. This tour will answer a lot. It certainly answered a lot for me. Um, I had never experienced really anything paranormal up until this this day. Um, I'm not saying you're going to, you know, it's not the things you're going to see on TV, like knocking things over or just, you know, all that stuff. It, it's going to take time. You may not see anything. You may see something. You may not hear anything. You may hear a lot of things. Who knows? The experience might be different. It seems to me that little by little, the spirits are starting to open up to, um, the public again. And so that's, that's really good to see them kind of break out of their shells and, and kind of readjust to living their normal lives on the, the ship. Um, I had an amazing experience. I highly recommend to go check out the Grey Ghost Project. It is only going to be ran, I think, up until uh, like March or April. I'm not 100% sure on that, but check their website. They have all the available dates. Buy your tickets now. Um, I know it's only on certain dates as well, so be on the lookout to see what those dates are, but definitely get your hands on this. This is such an amazing experience. Becca, again, thank you so much for letting us come in, record, and, and investigate with you. Uh, I absolutely had an amazing time and um, I can't wait to go and, and see what else this group has and, and more that this, this crew has. I, she was telling us there's they have a, a whole setup in Colorado at the Stanley Hotel, a place I very much want to go to, uh, obviously because of The Shining, but uh, because of its paranormal history. Uh, if you guys liked these paranormal kind of investigation videos, uh, leave, in, leave some comments down below. I'd love to find out and I'd love to go out and... and collab with actual paranormal investigators and, and open my mind to this world and, and expand my knowledge to this world. Uh, but I, I really had a great time. I would love to do this kind of thing again. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Did you guys enjoy it? Did you guys have a good time? Uh, leave all your comments down below. Again, we didn't show a lot. We didn't show our entire investigation because I didn't want to spoil everything for you. Uh, yeah, these are the majority locations she likes to go to, the the ones that she's had some of the best um investigations at. However, there are a couple other locations that you might go to that uh, might be allowed that day. So you might get a different tour than I did, uh, or you might get a different experience than I did. But uh, basically, buy your tickets to the Grey Ghost Project. We really appreciate them. We're not sponsored by them or anything. We just, uh, we really had a great time and we wanted to put a good word in, help get the word out to there. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, smash that like button, leave some comments down below. Uh, hit that subscribe button with the bell notification be where every time we put up a new video, follow us on all of our social medias, Instagram, X, TikTok, Threads, at the Knights of Horror or at Knights of Horror. Uh, and I will see you guys next week for another video. Later.